If you bought an original Galaxy S4 just a few weeks before Samsung announced the Galaxy S4 Active, chances are you're feeling some feelings right now. Or if you're still in the market for one or the other, you've probably got some questions on how the two devices compare. Well, let's try to answer those. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S4 Active versus Samsung Galaxy S4. Because we've already given the Active a thorough look in our quick review, we're going to limit this video to directly comparing it to the stock edition S4 in the usual three areas – hardware, software, and performance. To make sure you don't miss future comparisons, subscribe here on YouTube and visit us at Pocketnow.com and on our social media feeds. The Galaxy S4 Active takes the chassis of the Galaxy S4 and builds upon it. The Active is larger in every dimension, and even though we're talking millimeters here, the 15% increase in thickness over the S4 means you definitely feel it in the hand. And the increase in mass from 130 to 153 grams means you feel it in the pocket too. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We dinged the stock S4 in our review for feeling too plasticky despite its relatively good looks, and the Active's extra bulk goes a long way toward overcoming that, if you like its in-your-face rugged aesthetic. It feels better in the hand, too. It's satin finish nicer under the fingertips than the S4's hyperglaze. And obviously you won't feel the need to be as careful with the Active. Not because of any legitimate impact resistance or mil-spec ratings, but just because the Active's build won't show scratches and dings as easily. And then there's the Active's IP67 immersion and dust resistance ratings, which the S4 can't match at all without a case. But the Active makes some alterations to attain that capability. The biggest one is on the biggest component. The 5-inch display takes a kind of sideways step to LCD from AMOLED, a move we're not huge fans of, but which you might be, depending on your tastes. We're still talking about a 1080p 441 ppi panel here, so it's still beautiful. But we really hate to lose the heightened saturation and deep blacks that AMOLED provides. The traditional counter-argument to that is that LCD performs better in bright sunlight but while that may be true to a very limited extent in this case, it didn't make any noticeable difference in our testing. You pour enough sunlight on these screens, you won't be able to see anything on either one. So the decreased vibrance of the LCD and its purplish tint is tougher to swallow on the Active. Fortunately, the internals stay largely unchanged from the stock to the Active, so you spec heads can put your pencils down and take a breather for this one. We've got the same 1.9 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 driving everything on each device, with the help of 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of built-in storage. Because they're Samsung phones, you can count on that storage being expandable via microSD in each case, and you can also breathe a sigh of relief that the 2600 mAh battery stays the same across phones. And yes, even on the Active, it stays removable. The similarities continue in software, with both phones running a recent build of TouchWiz atop Android 4.2.2 Jellybean. If you like TouchWiz, you'll feel right at home on the Galaxy S4 Active. And if you hate it, you'll still have plenty to hate on on the Active as well. It's the same software experience. That said, apps like S Health make a lot more sense on the Active, which is presumably the more attractive phone to folks who spend a lot of time exercising. And Samsung's clever integration of a stock Torch app on the Active is something we wish every smartphone featured. It's very handy. Also ported pretty much straight from the S4 to the Active is the Camera Suite, which features the same viewfinder format, itself a port of the Galaxy Cameras software. The interface is a little complex when you get down into the settings menus, but its excellent shooting mode carousel is easy to use and understand in each instance. The Active features a special aqua shooting mode for underwater photos and videos, a mode that also enables the volume key as a shutter release, but it doesn't offer the S4's dual shot. And maybe more importantly to some, the Active's camera is an 8 megapixel sensor, down from 13 megapixels on its cousin. Now, megapixels certainly aren't everything, and our brief testing bore that out. Results were inconsistent, but certainly not a slam dunk in either direction. The S4 sometimes delivered warmer shots, and its 13 megapixel photos are certainly more zoomable than the Active's 8 megapixel shots, but both cameras do quite well outdoors, especially with HDR mode enabled. Indoor photos gave both devices a challenge. Overall, the stock S4's camera did exhibit a slight edge in most photos, with a little less noise and a little more detail in lower-lit areas. But then, the Active can take photos underwater. 
So there's that. In terms of video, both devices can film in full 1080p resolution, but the S4's edge is a little more apparent here, with its video quite clean and clear, while the Active favors the purple end of the spectrum and is much more susceptible to wide swings in exposure and white balance. Beyond the camera performance, there are some more concrete differences here. We've had another chance to evaluate voice calling between these two since our review landed, and voice does indeed take a big hit on the Active. Callers said we sounded muddy and muffled on the Active compared to the stock S4, which we didn't rate too highly on call performance in the first place. Those results also translated to speakerphone calls as well. If you're someone who relies on crisp call quality, you'll probably want to favor the stock S4 over the Active. The Active also takes a slight hit in synthetic benchmarks, but thankfully that doesn't translate to software performance. It's just as responsive as the S4, and whether that's a plus or a minus depends on your feelings about the S4's stock software load. Rounding out the performance differences on a bright note, battery endurance is fairly equal between these units, each one will get you through a full day with moderate use, and cellular reception also went hand in hand on each. With the Galaxy S4 Active, Samsung has largely succeeded in building a more durable version of the base product without sacrificing much. If you can deal with the less vibrant display, lower resolution camera, and reduced voice quality in exchange for a phone that can put up with the rigors of a rough and tumble lifestyle, the Active will probably be the device for you, and it's a solid choice in that regard. But if you want the true, no sacrifices cream of the crop when it comes to the Galaxy S series, the stock Galaxy S4 still holds the crown here. You just make sure to get a case if you're going to put it underwater, and definitely try not to drop it. Ever. Folks, we have so much more on the Galaxy S4 Active, the Galaxy S4, and pretty much every other smartphone and tablet you can imagine at pocketnow.com. So please visit us there. But before you go, like this video if you did enjoy it. Leave us a comment if you have something to say. And follow us on social media once again so you don't miss out on the discussion. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.